All right, ladies and gents, we got this beautiful Freightliner Classic. Not so beautiful. This is the one that got destroyed by a driver. Getting it cleaned up. We pressure washed it. We cleaned all the oil off. I guess this driver was fixing the truck himself. But we are having steering issues. So I'm going to go over a few things on the steering system and what you can look for. All right, we got the truck on. As you can see, we are bound up. Now, obviously, I'm not driving. And it's going to be difficult to turn it, but I shouldn't have any issue turning this wheel. I should have a lot more room to be able to turn it. I mean, I'm blowing as much as I can. All right, so we're bound up. Let's hit your steering shaft here. This is where I like to start. Just start, work my way up, work my way down. But already... You can see we got play. We got slop. And that will cause that steering to get jammed up like that. But we also and we're you gonna wanna check this whole this whole steering gear. We wanna check all the connections. We got more movement there. And you typically don't want any movement out of your steering gear, especially anywhere having to do with this you want to see if you're slipping here that'd be nice to have someone maybe running the truck turning it and you're also always going to get a lot better idea what's going on if you jack the truck up turn the wheels we've already done this there's a couple other things we found but it just allows you to get a full range of motion without having to fight yourself on the ground all right, now you're going to want to check your kingpins. This is your kingpins. It's inside here, and it holds your axle to the actual wheel hub over here. But you, like I said, you want to jack that up, jack the truck up, and you basically can get a pry bar or something, stick it in your tire. And just wiggle it and if you have any movement there's a certain DOT standard but I mean you will tell if you got a lot of movement and this one has a lot of movement enough to make us feel like this is the issue along with that other shackle over there this one so you can just take this out so bolt here should pull off pretty easily and then this will just slide out and you should be able to bring this to you I mean you could do it yourself take this bearing out and replace it you should be able to bring it to any spring or axle shop uh, drive line shop they should be able to do that for you the steering gear I may do a video on it if they end up having me do it uh, this customer wants to get this truck back on the road and they don't necessarily aren't really necessarily listening to me when it comes to everything um you know they're already spending a lot of money on just trying to get it fixed up internally or maybe i'll show you how that's working out um we bled the system they had the power steering pump replaced don't think that's the issue um the power steering was overfilled when we got it so we went ahead and drained it and bled the system out Maybe think it replaced the filter in here. Maybe hoping that that was going to fix it. And it ended up not doing it. Same same exact issue. Um, we had just done that, you know, before we inspected everything. Just because it was over full. Figured the filter hadn't been replaced. And it probably wasn't bled properly when that got switched out. Um, then after we started doing some inspections. Is where we noticed all of these issues. So these one, two and the kingpin over there i'm gonna say is definitely causing that issue inside of the truck the driving and so we're gonna have to start going through and and replacing it i am not going to be able to do the kingpin because i don't have the setup the tools to do it so i'm basically going to suggest to them to go to the driveline shop and they can get all of this done for them and i might end up be doing the steering gear um 
you know, unless, I don't know if this shop does that or not, but unless I just want them to do everything, which I don't necessarily have a problem with. I've already got a lot of work into this truck. Uh, I'm trying to fix it, working on multiple different things. I got the AC over here. This guy had everything rewired. I mean, I still haven't fixed it up. I finally did get power to the compressor, but the wiring is still got to get fixed. But when I got everything hooked up and got the compressor going, and this being the compressor, it is leaking out of the rear. You may even see that it's got some fluid down there. I don't know if you can really see it, but it's got fluid down there leaking out of the back. Of course, with these Freightliner Classics, you cannot get the dryer anymore. So you're just replacing the compressor without the dryer. And having water, and the point of having the dryer is to get the water out of the system. So you are going to be fighting with water in the system. And that's probably why this compressor that was replaced was is leaking now. And this is why... I, do not really like going behind people's work, especially when it comes to AC. I usually just tell the people, if I'm going behind someone and it's messed up and it's not an easy fix, yeah, I'm replacing the whole system. Vacuum it out, flush it out, do everything you gotta do, do it, start over. But with this, since I can't get the dryer, I'm kind of stuck in a situation where the customer maybe just wants me to replace the compressor and see what happens, but it's most likely gonna leak again. So we're, we're running into that. Uh, I guess I'll show you the inside, see where we're going with that. So the, the inside is still pretty messed up. I got some parts. Of course, you're always going to get some wrong parts from the, the dealer. Really, the best thing to do with this is going it would be to go and find an old classic. I found some in Ellenwood, Georgia. They have three. It's just a two-hour drive from here. So does the customer want to pay four hours? I mean, I'll do a deal for them and figure it out. But I mean, four hours drive time and then going to get the stuff. But it would allow me, if they had it all in here, to get everything I would need. I mean, this thing is, it needs all the light covers. Got some windows missing back there. They're going to buy some new mattresses. We're going to put it in there. I mean, basically, I'm trying to get this truck ready for them to go to put a driver in it. And if there's, you know, still nagging issues, they'll come back and I can fix them. But I'm hoping, you know, to go down to Ellenwood and get some stuff. So even if they do leave, I can get it back and fix this dash up a little bit. Fix these doors up. The doors need to be, the whole panels need to be replaced. I mean, you can just see it's been cracked. It's, it's got, it's just, it's bad. It's got rewiring stuff. It's, I can't really see there, but I mean, this guy tore all this out to get his radio going, to get this outlet going. I mean, that door's messed up. The little locks for the front windows are on back order, so I'm going to have to figure out something with that. I mean, leave it in the comments if you have an idea, but that's the whole thing of having to go to Ellenwood because you would hope that, you know, these things are on there. You can't necessarily... The guys that I talk to, they're not going to sit there and get a whole list of of what is wrong and go and check and tell you what they have and don't have. It's basically like you come here and you see you get what you get and you don't get to fit. But this is what I'm working with. I mean, I honestly, I like the progress, but at, at the same time, I'm, I'm kind of getting to the point where it's, you know, it's been here a week and a half. It's at the crib, just chilling at the house. It's like, I don't know about doing these house jobs anymore unless it's just I usually do like a quick if you just want to come in I can get you done right there but I got these steer tires on there got the little new oil pan it's looking good it's definitely got some leaks from up here still but I kind of knew that you needed to start with the oil pan I mean it was nasty nasty and here's my driveway it's it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be but it's drive tires I'm about to just got those I'm about to put those on today and Probably need a pressure wash up there again. I think, I think my wife actually ended up pressure washing, and she did a good job on the engine. Um, uh, she got some out because it's clean, and like I said, I cleaned up all the oil. This guy had nasty oil stains all up here. It was, it was bad. But Freightliner Classics, I love them. I would, 
love to have one that would be nice if i could find a good one i'd probably swoop it up but i don't know this one right here is uh it's got issues i mean just little things i tighten that up but it's that seal's probably bad and it looks like it's leaking from back in the air so you know it's definitely got some more oil leaks i'm probably just gonna have to tell the customer that i'm not trying to do oil stuff here at the house it's just too much of a mess i knew this person i was trying to help him out but it's just a little too much but i mean besides that i think we did well on it i hope they are happy with it i'm probably still going to be working with it but i'm dreading this ac so it's monday july 5th i don't know what's open so i'm gonna start calling but after that we will see what happens all right peace